Hello everyone. For the last couple months, I've been building a split flap display. It's based mechanically on Dave Koenigsman's great open source design, slightly modified to make it printable on an Ender 3. The PCBs were built from scratch, based around the ESP8266 to keep cost to a minimum, and the software is also built from scratch. Which is not to say anything bad about Dave's work, I just really like writing software. The display has quite a few features, allowing you to display the current time and date, multiple lines, slowing down or speeding up the flaps, or adding delays between messages, and the firmware can also be updated remotely. It's entirely self-hosted, and so the only thing that's required for it to operate is a connection to the network and a web browser. I'm going to be mailing this unit to a great lover of split flap displays, and so I wanted to make the setup experience as easy as possible. Let's start with the out-of-box setup experience. When the unit is first turned on, finding that it can't connect to Wi-Fi, it'll start an access point and show you the message Use AP. From this point, you should find a Wi-Fi network called Split Flap Setup AP. From there, it's a simple matter of selecting your SSID and entering your password. Once it's connected, all the flaps should return back to blank. And now that it's connected, it should be advertising itself at the address splitflap.local. Just go there in your browser, and you'll be greeted with the main control page. Here you can enter any message you like. Hello. And it should just display it. However, you may notice a bunch of other options here as well. What if I want to have the hello on the right side? I could just add spaces, but that's kind of tedious. Under the justify settings, I can select where I'd like to see the text. Here's right. And here's center. Great! Now what if I want to show the current time? By selecting the time and date input, and using a POSIX style format string, I can also display, for instance, the current time. But perhaps that's a little too annoying. Let's just show the day of the week instead. Excellent! Some of you might be wondering what the little checkbox is at the bottom. Well, let's say you set this up the way you like, but you want to alert anybody in the area that it's time for a coffee break. Just enable the checkbox, set your time, let's say 10, and send off your message. Now we can enjoy our coffee for 10 seconds, and we'll again be reminded of what day of the week it is. Cool. One nice thing about this text input system is the ability to show messages longer than 8 characters. When using the justify none option, the message is chopped up into 8 character lines and displayed verbatim. That's not too aesthetic. So, by choosing one of the justify options, it displays whole words where it can, and chops up those that it can't. And if you don't like where it breaks the lines, you can always tell it where to break it yourself by using the pipe character. The time in between each line is adjustable. If I open up the status URL, you can see the state of all the units in the display. And here under master, you'll see an option called multi-line delay. Let's change that. Here I've opened up the shell page, which allows me to send commands to the unit. First, let's look at which commands are available. The one we're interested in is md, followed by how many milliseconds we want between each line. Let's set it to 10 seconds by entering md10,000. And now let's refresh the status window just to make sure it made the change, and there we go. And now let's send that message again. Seems like about 10 seconds to me. Let's talk a little bit about the way the messages are sent to the device. The shell allows me to send a message, as you can see, but that's not the only way. The web front end posts to an endpoint, which looks a little bit like a REST API, which you'll see in the inspector when I send the same message, like so. This allows you to write your own front ends if you wanted to create, for example, a stock ticker or a broken build alarm. Well, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll be back in eight years with another one.